doesn't look like I have a problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay, guys. It's hot messness. Welcome to my eyeshadow collection 2019. I'm going to be going through and setting them up by brand. I will leave timestamps and if this looks like it's going to be too long, we may have to separate this in two. So we will see. But um, I'm going to show you guys all the palettes with the purpose of eventually being separating things into a declutter and keep and I'm not sure so if there's anything in this collection where I'm showing you guys that tells me automatically like I don't want this I'll let you guys know and those will be separate videos so let's just jump into it okay so this is the Morphe eyeshadow palettes that I have I have the original 350 which I only used a few times. Uh, I know I followed quite a few Jaclyn Hill and Nikki tutorials, uh, tutorials with this thing, and I already know that um, it's gonna go. I haven't touched it in probably two years. I wanted to know about the hype. This is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. It's actually pretty good, used it a couple times. Here is the Morphe and James Charles palette. I had a little review on essentially the purples and I like this palette. And then I also have the vault and this one, I don't have a very clear, concise opinion on it. I have not used it enough to have that. I've tried to take some of the colors and use it for deeper shades to blend and sometimes it turned out patchy because they are really pigmented, but I don't have a very clear opinion on these. But I mean, some of these colors are just divine. These are my BH Cosmetics palettes. I only have the Galaxy Chick with all these baked shadows. They have gotten no love. They're really, really pretty, but they're all shimmers and I just, I never use it. And then Take Me to Brazil. This was one of my first color palettes. I know I really went in with this. I feel like now that I have some of my other palettes, I don't really have a need for this. But back in the day, it was, it's, it really got some love. I have one Glam Light palette. This was sent to me for PR purposes and Honestly, I thought, you know what? Nobody get, is gonna care. It's another neutral palette, but it's actually a really nice palette. So I may have to throw up a little video on this one because it is a really pretty, nice neutral palette. I actually only have one Tarte eyeshadow palette. The other one that I purchased a long time ago, I returned, but this one is the Graveyard Girl palette. I really like this. I mean, even the stupid glitter infused brown, I had fun with this palette and I still do make the effort to reach for this one. Look, I even hit pan on one of these, but I really like this one. It's the only Tarte palette I own. Uh, the rest of my Tarte products are always face things. Uh, I had one of their palettes a long time ago, and it was one of the only palettes that I ever returned because I just didn't like the payoff. But this one, I really enjoyed. Here are my Kat Von D palettes. I know she's, she's just being a booger right now, but I love her aesthetic. I love what she does with her stuff. I just wish she would get her act together. This one is the Saint and Sinner palette. I thought it was a lot of fun, interesting colors. The Pastel Goth, really pretty. I like this for transition shades. I don't feel like it's super pigmented for, I mean, you could use it alone, but and then this one is the Anniversary Palette. And this was my very first Kat Von D palette, the Monarch Palette. So pretty, one of the very first warm neutral palettes that really caught my eye. I did some damage on this one. And the Matte and Metal Palette. I mean, some really beautiful shades. 
I used to have the Muvita Loca palette and it was stolen. And I had the Fetish palette, which I did a review and I actually returned it. Up next are my Dose of Colors palettes. This one here is the Hidden Treasures palette. It's a really nice neutral palette. It's just one that I never ever reach for. I mean, the mattes are nice, uh, but I prefer the five pans for sure. And we have Marvelous Mobs. Love, love this one. Sassy Siennas. Pretty cool, which I haven't even touched yet. I am very curious about how this performs on the eyes, if all the colors turn out being too similar. I don't think so, but I think it just depends on how you use them. Then I have baked browns, like I needed more neutrals, but you know, just in case. Blushing Berries, which is another one that's just gorgeous. And Snow Angels, which I promised I would do a look with this one. I have yet to do one on my channel, but I've used these colors and I love it. And I even got an extra one. I need to be doing this video soon, so that way I can post the giveaway for this. Such pretty colors. These next two are my Makeup Revolution palettes that I got to support Emily Noel. Um, this one, I just found it a little bit too hard to work with. I really wanted to love this, and then every time I try to get into this, I end up picking up black, so this is probably going in the outro pile. And then also the Wants palette. I really enjoyed this on first impression but I focused on colors that I love. I haven't played with a whole lot of the other ones, so this might have to go into the pile of to try to see if it sticks around. These are my Rimmel eyeshadow palettes. I did a look with this one because it was trying drugstore for the first time. If you wanted a Naked Cherry, I think that this is a pretty decent dupe. And I haven't even touched this one yet fun colors. This one is called the color edition. What is it? Yeah, it's just color edition. So I'll have to try this one and let you guys know. These are my Melt Cosmetics. I really fell in love with the eyeshadow palette formula. It's very soft. Some people find it too crumbly. I like it. I really, really like it. I like a soft formula. So this is actually one of my favorite palettes, and I was surprised at how much I liked 27, even though it's a neutral, but it's got these, you know, pinky tones, and I love it, because it is mostly mattes and just a few shimmers. It's the only reason I didn't get Smoke Sessions, because Smoke Sessions was the opposite, and not really my jam. And I have a couple of the Hockey Pucks. This is the what is this, Love Sick Stack? Haven't really used, I need to play with it more before I decide if, I, if it goes or not. And then this one is, is it Baby Girl? The real peachy looking one. Really pretty. I feel like this bottom stack goes really well with the 27 palette. These are my Sugar Pill palettes. I always had the intention of putting these in an empty Z palette. Some of them are already depotted, but it's the main, you know, colorful shades. You got Dolly Pop, all that kind of thing. All the ones that got people all excited about color way back in the day. Then they came out with the Feline Fancy collection. Pretty, but oh man, I, I never touch these. Like it's already hit some kind of weird hard pan and that happened pretty quickly. See, I'd have to take like, I don't know, something to that. So I don't know, that should probably go in the pile of not so much. And then this one, still usable. Oops, let's just drop it on the ground. 
and this one. Next up, we have my ColourPop palettes. This was the very first ColourPop palette that I bought, and I like it. It's, it's seen some love. Recently got the Ooh La La because it was all pinkies. And then I have both of Kathleen Lights, which I think these are great palettes. And this one was actually one of my favorites. Love these kind of tones. Here are my MAC little single eyeshadows. This one um, I will never get rid of. The man bought it for me and it was a sweet thing. So it's one of those ones that will stay with me forever even if they go bad <laughs> i don't even this has its own like drawer too it just sits in i was all about this collection same thing i love those greeny tones for a hot minute that was my jam this was another one that was oh my gosh so hard to get like i went to the mac store the morning that the cinderella collection dropped i was able to get a lipstick and the palette and that was it and I actually used this the other day and I still enjoy these kind of shades. I know I have them in other forms, but still a nice little palette. And this one from Patrick Star, it was, you know, the spring one with the purples. I actually wanted all of them. I really did want all of Patrick's collections. I never got them in time or I was waiting for them to go on sale and uh, missed out, but I really wanted that one spring, what was it, summer? I wanted the summer one especially, but these are my little Mackies. I have quite a large lot of Anastasia Beverly Hills. I just really fell in love with them and this would be really hard for me to get rid of any of them. This is like the uh, over the top collector, but this was the artist palette and I remember it being fun and colorful. I loved this color. I really wanted Unicorn to become a permanent shade. I really liked it. I haven't touched these in a long time, but that yellow shade wasn't that great. These are probably going bad at this point. The Maya Mia palette, shades that have kept me from buying the singles because they were here. I have caramel and sienna great neutral warm shades this one was the world traveler oh i loved this one when it came out morocco is an amazing shade but you know not ones that i use a whole heck of a lot fudge is a great color it is a single and i believe it's in some of these other palettes the tamana palette oh, here's an oldie Sangria. I remember watching YouTube videos on all of these from some of my favorite YouTubers. No, he's working. This one was a great one. Oh, I wanted this shade right here, Deep Purple, to become a permanent single. It was one of my favorites. Just such a pretty shade. I know I have this kind of thing now but I really, really wanted them to do this one. And Pink Champagne makes an appearance again. Hot Chocolate, I think Buttery's in like a thousand of these. Have the Modern Renaissance. So I was an ABH fan before this. This was a thing that everybody freaked out over and it is a beautiful palette, but the only one that I didn't get was like what, Catwalk and Amrezy but beautiful shades, fun. The Master Palette by Mario is, there's just something about this palette that's so magical. There's a ton of shimmers, which I'm never really all about, but these shimmers layer on each other like nobody's business. Like you can take any of these kind of colors and then pop them on top and transform them into something else. And that was something so brilliant to me about these particular shades. Love this palette. And the subculture. This is one that I just can't ever part with, but it, it is not the easiest to work with. These shades right here were kind of useless, but I mean, I wish they'd come back and redo it. 
I really do. Because it's just the kind of palette that takes patience to work with. And then Prism. Fun, but some of the colors were a little weird, like Sphere. It just, it didn't really translate. It's kind of a duddy of a yellow, you know, like what do you do with that? And then some of the newer ones, you've got Soft Glam, which is an amazing neutral palette. Very beautiful, fun, great neutral. Norvina was like what we wanted from purple and then something happened. I just wish they had more real true purples in here, but still a very pretty palette. And the newest one, Sultry. I do enjoy this. Um, and I've even found use for bloom. Whereas before I was like, what the heck? But I did a look with some of the neutrally kind of shades and then just take a little bit of this on the outer and it buffed into it. These colors right here, just pretty beautiful shimmers, but a fun palette nonetheless. I love my ABH. I don't know that I can get rid of any of these. Okay, right here we have the Saucebox Cosmetics palettes. I also have this purple palette that they had and a Temptations, but I depotted them and I put them, so I'll end up showing you guys those in the singles, but they did come originally in a palette. These ones are pretty new to me. This is the Nocturne palette. It's like a neutral palette that's deeper with these deeper shimmers, so you could do a lot of different kinds of smoky eyes with this one. Have not used this one as much as I should, for sure. This one is the Secret Garden palette. Fun pops of color. I did a look on my channel with this one. Love this one right here. Ooh, so pretty. These ones don't swatch very well, but they perform beautifully on the eyes. And then this one was kind of a surprise to me. This is the Etude palette. And this one is like the ultimate staple for neutrals because it's not just warm neutrals, it's just all neutral. I use these two a lot for under the eyes. You could contour with these. This is like if you just really needed something or if you're working on um, building a kit for a makeup artist, this is a great palette. And then the Mermaid Life, which I felt so burned by. This darn palette was so expensive. It was like $75 and then it came down dramatically. The foils are really, really pretty, but because it's in this monstrosity, I never use it. So I need to put these bad boys into a magnetic palette so I can get to them to see if I even like them. There were a few duds, these two were duds. So for this palette to be so expensive and to have some duds, like hard pan central, and it was like that pretty immediate. Yeah, so there's that. These are my Suva Beauty eyeshadow palettes. I remember getting these essentially for my kit but I don't know, these have to go in the I don't know pile because I don't know how I feel about them anymore. I mean, are they better than Sugar Pill? Are they not? Are they too old? You know, I've had them for a long time and this is where hoarding can be a problem because they, they don't look so great. So I think we're gonna put these in the test out to see if they stay pile. And then this is the Neutral Necessities, which there is a couple colors in here I loved. This one, I think it was called Turkish Bath, but I don't know, it's just, it's not swatching great. I don't know if they've gone bad or what. So these two are gonna be going in the pile of, oh, we gotta see if we still like you. All right, these are all my Juvia's place. I started a big project where I was depanning, depotting. So all right here are the original Masquerade and the Magic, I believe, yeah. 
So some of them have seen better days because when I was depotting, I kind of cracked some of them. I thought I'd get more use out of them by putting them in here, but they're still in just a giant palette. I need to play with these more. Now onto the palette part. We have the Saharan 2. I love this palette. Oh, it's so good. These shades, oh, so good. Look at that, so good. It's such a great cherry, golden, delicious color. I like to mix this one with this one. This is another one of my favorites, the Deuce, so good. The Zulu is a lot of fun, bright, delicious colors. The shimmers are just divine. That's similar to that Norvina one, isn't it? This one is one of my new favorites, the Tri Palette. I have only used the new Warrior a couple times. It's a great neutral palette, beautiful shimmers. Here's the Warrior 2. This one I've used a couple times. I haven't been blown away by this one yet, but I definitely need to play with it, share some thoughts with you guys. The Afrique palette, I know that I never did a video on this one. I didn't find these ones as easy to blend, but it was still, you know, a good Juvia's Place palette. Not my favorite by all means. And the Festival, another one that's just awesome. Like this one right here. Oh, I love it. Love those pinky shades. This one. Delicious orangey red. And then this one. Great, great palette. Can't quite part with any of the Juvia's Place. Not at this time. But if there's anything you guys want to see, let me know. Right here I got the Strobe Cosmetics Creepy Cute Palette. The best pastel palette I've ever seen. They're so pigmented, you don't need a white base underneath it. Love it, love it so much. And then Divina Cosmetics released this collection and they put it in a palette, so I'm including it. This is Secret Diaries, right? Yeah, Secret, yeah, Secret Diary. I haven't done a video on these yet, but if you wanna see that, let me know down below in the comments. I have one Kylie palette. This was her Christmas one, maybe the first one. Did not like this. I did a live eye swatching. This one is definitely being booted. I think I only bought it because I thought it would get views and it, it didn't for my tiny channel. And the Makeup Geek Manny palette. Oh, I love this. I love this shade. I love this shade. I know a lot of these are now singles. Like you can get Aphrodite as a single. Um, this one as a single, quite a few of these. Kind of interesting when you found out the drama that some of these were supposed to be Jaclyn Hill's colors, but I really like this palette. I'm gonna put it aside to play with it and see if it's still, still good. This was a little Love Lux Beauty palette. It's their drenched powder formula and some of them were highlighters. And I mean, insane pigmentation but I just never ever use this. And um, I really should put it in my pile to test because if I'm not gonna use it, at least it can find a good home. These are my Lime Crime Venus palettes. The original Venus was like unsurpassed. I mean, now we have the modern Renaissance. There's so many things like this, but when it came out, I mean, it was sold out for, for months. It was so hard to get. Beautiful, fun palette enough that I, it makes me want the Lime Crime Venus XL, even now, says someone with too many palettes. Here's a Venus 2. I got this later on. Really, really pretty, fun shades. I'd like it if they would do an extension on this one too. And the Venus 3. I really, I mean, these are right up my alley. These are my shades. Like this was made for Vanessa. Really, really interesting, fun, but I mean, I'm sure we have most of these 
in other things. Like I didn't need this, but there's nothing quite like a palette. You just take it and go create a look. Two palettes even, just really pretty. These are my colored rain palettes. I have the Queen of Hearts. The hype was real with this one and I can still create some really beautiful looks with this. This one is just, it's so good. It's such a good palette. And then the Beauty Rest. I got one of these. I know I have colors like this. It's nice to have this deep, dark, little fun moment here in a palette. Don't reach for it as much as I should, but fun. This might have to go into my I don't know though. I have to I have to learn to get rid of some things. These are my two certify palettes. I have the Tropic Wonders, which I've used it a couple times, but I haven't done anything crazy on my channel. I love that you can go, you know, this way with it or you can go all over. And I love that it's all matte. And this is the kind of thing that would actually get me to get rid of something like my Suva Beauty ones because you have color that works. Also the Dynasty palette. Again, they go in nice little trios, which is great. You've got two mattes and a shimmer, so you can just do a look that way, or you can mix and match, which I love. I do want to get the newest ones. They came out with a new green one that's supposed to be coming soon. And then I believe there's two more, but yes, I want them but I need to do some looks. I haven't done any looks on my channel with these. These are all my Sydney Grace. She came out with some five pan palettes and I love these. It's like guesswork out. I don't think she sells these anymore. You can get some of them as singles, but this one was the Romantic Rose. And then this one was called Steel Blue. I mean, amazing, fun super pigmented. I know I swatched all these on my channel for sure. This one was called Winter Forest. It's kind of got that same look as the Dose of Colors, you know, where it's all that same tonage, but oh, some of these are just so yummy. Grace and Love, this was a beautiful one. Love this shade right here. This one was amazing. It's called the Burnt Orange. This one was called Fireside. Love this one too. Just takes the guesswork. You throw it in your purse, take it along with you. Love it. This one was called Carnival. It was more colorful. And then this one was one of my favorites called Garden Path. Get this one. Oh, so nice. And then their newest actual full palette, Autumn's Rain. Everybody's done reviews on this. I was supposed to give you guys two looks and uh, my camera had given out on me, so I have to refilm those. This is a little Sonia Kashuk that I had picked up because Tati had recommended it oh so long ago. And, um, oh, that's pigment from something else. I'm pretty sure these are bad. She had said they were like Tom Ford or something, but this one's got to go directly into the trash. <laughs> so old. Okay, now we are on to some Wet n Wild. I have some very old ones that I think are already in the trash pile. But I think I picked these ones up to do looks exactly like was shown on the back. And I think I ended up doing two of them. Which two did I use? These two. They're okay. I know some people are all about Wet n Wild because of the price point, but I just wasn't crazy impressed. And for the amount of products that I have, it's like, mm, did you have to add these two? I mean, like, it, there's like no pigment from this shade. So two of these I have opened. 
I think these other two will probably end up going in a giveaway pile, I think. These are my Viseart eyeshadow palettes. I have four of the original sizes. This one was the Petite Pro Mini. It was the first one. I meant to get the second one. It's a great little palette, but now that I have it, I mean, like, I very rarely reach for them. They're just special shadows. How do I explain them? The matte ones, they're just so true to the coloring, but I think this little guy is going to go in the maybe pile. This one is the Trist palette. It's supposed to be more suited for the regular makeup wear. I have to put this in a pile. Like, mm, what are you going to do with that? And see if I'm actually going to get some usage out of this one because I really just haven't touched it at all. And then these ones, I don't know that I'd ever get rid of. This is the Editorial Brights. I feel like having these kind of colors, I could get rid of some of the other bright eyeshadow palettes that I have because I have these. And they're just, they're true to color, they're beautiful. I still want that big mega pro one. This one is the neutrals. And I've brought this on set because I can do a lot with this. You can do eyebrows. They're just really, really good. They don't excite. It's not like you look at them, but they're like never fail you. And this one is the dark mattes. Just a really pretty fun. You can do, you know, looks with these two together. I need to use these more for sure. And then here's the warm neutrals. So that is my Viseart's. Now these are my Jouer eyeshadow palettes. This one right here is one of the first ones that I ever got. I enjoyed it, but I don't know if I see a lot of usage for this one. This was the springtime in Paris. You know that I love these kind of colors, but I just have not touched them. So I think this one's gonna go into the pile of, I don't know. I mean, that pigmentation is beautiful. Then this one was the Skinny Dip Ultra Foiled. These ones were so pretty, but I realized that I have dupes for all of these from Luxie. Like every single one of these shades, Luxie Beauty has some kind of a, a dupe for. Really, really pretty, but I don't know that I need to reach for any of these. I don't know, that, that must need to go in the pile of, I need to play with you more. And then this one, I got this, the Essential Jet Set very standard i did a full face of the jouet jet set new products and i don't know i don't know if i'm ever going to reach for this i know it's small and compact but i have so many of these kind of shades in some kind of five pan palette it yeah it's gonna have to maybe be in a pile i have one by terry palette this was sent to me from pensmith skincare and I used it a couple times. The quality is nice, but I just don't really have a need for this in my collection. I'm not reaching for it. It's, it's just not really needed, but there's by Terry. Okay, so this pile is all of my Lorac palettes. I remember jumping on that Lorac train once the original Pro palette came out and this one you can see I loved on this one I don't even know if this is gonna be like expired or whatnot so this is gonna have to go into the pile of do I still love it test it out see how I like it because I haven't touched these in such a long time I don't even know how I feel about them here is the second one and I loved these cool colors. And Lorac's formula is pretty
pretty interesting because it's so pigmented and soft but I found in time if you're somebody that likes to layer a bunch of colors that sometimes the colors can kind of muddy up so if you really just focused on three shades it'd be fine but when you start doing a bunch mm, not so much so definitely need to do a re-exploration of Lorac then I have the original Pro One palette. I got this when it, it was that disaster of a release and only so many were done. I was one of those people. I was late for work for this palette, but I originally loved this. And I don't know if it's an expiration thing because I've had this for so long and am I keeping it just for the sake of, I don't know, you know, I was one of the this was a palette I just had to have. But I love the format of Lorac and how they do, especially their pro palettes with the two mattes and the two shimmers or even the original small ones, one row of matte, row, row of shimmer, but there needs to be a whole series. Do I still love Lorac? This is number one. Here's the Lorac Mega Pro 2. This one's seen a little bit of love, but it was fun here that they had these warmer kind of shades and the cooler kind of shades. It was just a really interesting palette. But again, I feel like I need to get into this and see if I still enjoy the quality or is it just, you know, sad, broken, and needs to go. I had skipped the Mega Pro 3 because it was all brown shades and I got the four this one I have not used very much. I found that I did a couple looks with it and it felt a little muddy. So another one of those palettes that I feel like I need to play with, I need to put it in the play pile and see if it's gonna make the cut. Then they had the Lorac Pro Brunch palette and this one was all of these very light shades and it got a lot of mixed reviews. Now this pastel palette is actually decent for blending, but am I gonna take this out to blend colors like this? Yeah, I could, I haven't really, but again, do we add this to the list of, do we bother playing with it? You might remember these little guys. These were like the little ones that were Ulta sale like on Black Fridays like they were only like $15 are really pretty colors never ever ever touch them the Lorac unzipped palettes were so popular this is the original unzipped and here is the unzipped gold I actually preferred the original unzipped I rarely use this one I know I was all about following those tutorials, but I mean, I have these kind of shades. And that one still feels nice though. It's so hard to let go. But those are those. And this one is the newest one. It's the Lorac, considered, it, it's considered the Pro Shine Bright. So it came out and then it, it like, immediately went on sale. And I've only used it a couple times, but I actually picked this up, number one, because it was on sale. But number two, I wanted to see if I still enjoyed Lorac's quality. It's like, oh, it's on sale. Do I like these like I used to? So this definitely needs to come up on the channel and see how we feel about it. This is one of my largest of palettes besides wait till you see the urban decay but this is Too Faced cosmetics and at one point I needed everything that Too Faced came out with this is an old palette I don't know that this will ever go away because um, this was one of the first palettes my boyfriend got me and I remember following all kinds of YouTube videos on this and I don't even think that this is like usable <laughs> but it's it's a memory thing and 
like it. The first Papa Don't Peach, Chocolate Soleil. This color ends up in almost every Too Faced palette now, but it's a, um, it's special for me. So that one, what is this from? 2014. Is that not crazy? Then at these little nine pan palettes, which I loved so much. This one, the Natural Matte. Um, I burned through Nudie. I loved these shades back in the day. Honey Butter, Chocolate Cookie. I, I don't even know if these are any good anymore. So there's that one. This one is Sugar Pop. I just love the idea of the shades. I, I don't know if these are even decent, but the pigmentation is not insane. But that one is Sugar Pop. This one was extra special because I remember Crispy Makeup had done videos on this and you could use these wet or dry as liners. But even now, I don't think I'm gonna get a whole lot of color payoff from them. These were, you know, your major highlight shades. They were fun at the time but these may have to go into the declutter pile. This one, a la mode eyes. I remember loving these back in the day, but a lot of these bigger shades were similar, like this little one with glitter in it. I used to love that. And now I just think these are kind of toast. <laughs> This one was such a soft, fun little palette, the Romantic Eye. Really soft, beautiful, kind of, the things that you would think of for a, a wedding eye. Haven't touched these in forever. I really wish that Too Faced would do something like this again because they were fun. They took the guesswork out and then you could have these smaller little palettes but I don't even know that the mattes translate anymore. And then they came out with the peanut butter and jelly. And I loved this palette so much, these warm browns, but I know I have so many of these in my collection now, but it was just such a fun palette. And I loved the little cards that always came with them because it gave you all these fun little looks that you could do. The pigmentation's still pretty good on this one. Then they came out with the peanut butter and honey, and most people hated this. I liked the, the variation, but the pigmentation and the quality was mommy, not mommy, as good as the original. Mommy, tell me. And then came the chocolate bar. One of the things that just blew everybody away, this neutral palette, I took this on set with me to my first couple of shoots, and it was great back then. I mean, this thing has seen better days. The quality was nice on these. Everyone loved these. Um, but I don't know that I need it anymore. Then they followed that up with the semi-sweet chocolate bonbon. And so you got those fun shades. This shade peanut butter was so popular. That's why they had made the peanut butter and jelly palette because of that peanut butter shade. I don't even know if they were exact. Yep, that's why this one came. But these big matte or shimmer brow bone highlights that came with was like such a good idea at the time. And these were some more cooler tones. This shade was like useless. You couldn't, it was like, what the heck? Even back then, it was a, like a useless shade, like a topper that was not successful, but I got a lot of use out of these. Beautiful neutral. Then they went for the chocolate bonbon and this was, I, I wasn't a fan of the hearts. I didn't feel like it was necessary, but they went even cooler in tone. There's that shade that's in every single, <laughs> it's like was their pop of color. They had to have totally fetch. It was in the last palette uh, or the very first one that I had, but they're fun to have this brow bone color the big one right here, and then, you know, your colors that you needed, 
and then your little pops was like this and this and this, but it was great for its time. And then this one came and everyone lost their minds and it was not a great palette. Some people liked it, but there was so much drama. I went to an Ulta just to be the first in line when this was released. And I remember they only had like six palettes in stock. I was number six in line, but they let the person in front of me buy two. And then I ended up having to, I ended up getting it online, staying up all night long. I bought two, I think I ended up selling one. But, you know, it's okay. That smell, that peachy smell, it's still there after all this time. This one I had picked up, the Stardust palette with Vegas Nay. She was such a thing. I have some of her lashes. It's, uh, it's pretty. As old as hell though. Probably gonna have to go in the go away pile. Now this one was such a great neutral palette. I never did a video on this because I felt like nobody cares <laughs> what my opinion is, but this is so good it really reminds me of the olden days of the chocolate bar it's a great neutral with pops of color and then it's got different formulas in it so you've got these like this is a matte with sparkle in it but the sparkle kind of goes away and then you've got their new really foiled shades that come in like the chocolate gold palette so this is really like the updated version of the other chocolate bars. Really, really good palette. This is one that I definitely want to use more, but I really like this. And then this one I grabbed on the whim because they had their big old summer sale. The packaging is kind of ridiculous. It's like way too big, but the colors are really pretty. You've got these fun shades that I know I have stuff like this, but it's a really pretty. And then they've got the transformer that you can use on top. Let's try to get you a couple of the swatches. So here's the other shades. And then you could put unicorn tears on top and transform them. It's just a fun palette and I'm glad that I got it. Have I reached for it? No, but it is, it is fun. These are my Jeffree Star Cosmetics palettes. Beauty Killer was the very, very first one. And I went to DragCon just so I could be one of the first people to get this. Got in a car accident and they didn't even have the palettes at DragCon. I was so disappointed. So I've hit pan on China White. This is the ultimate brow bone shade. I absolutely love this. And then Courtney was amazing and i had to repress rich bitch it's uh it's not the same quality since i repressed it but you can definitely see the growth in his company from this to where he has gone now vanity was a great color star power it was just very representational of the brand of jeffree star and it's definitely made some leaps and bounds like they had this glittery black shade it's oh so pretty in theory but could never really get that glitter to stick next up is androgyny and this is actually one of my favorites it is so pretty i like to take frosting and use it as a highlighter i don't know why this one has not come out as a highlight yet because even jeffree star's makeup artist for the campaigns use this as a highlight these colors are fun, they're beautiful. Definitely need to put this one in and give it some more love. But the matte shades were really good and I just really enjoyed this palette. So this one is probably the star, everybody. This was like one of the biggest palettes of the year last year, Blood Sugar. I did a live eye swatching of this. There are a few shades that uh, play a little bit too similar. I think it was Fresh Meat and Extraction. They kind of perform similarly on the eyes, but 
I loved the various tones here. The shimmers were nice. They're definitely got more foiled as he's gone along, but this was just such a great palette and the kind of shades that I love. You know, you got your pinkies, movies, purpley tones. These are always my favorite kinds of shades. Thirsty came out and it was, it was interesting for sure. It had these crazy foils, which remind me very much of Jouer's. You're getting that really, really pretty, interesting pigment. The problem with this one is that you can hit that weird pan. Like on this one, I've had to take a little bit of tape in order to get that off. It still works, but it's definitely a little annoying. So your top shades were warmers and then you had these pops of color. I could do a look with these and I did, but it wasn't my favorite when you look at it all together. It was like, eh, it's a little different. Um, I don't know if I was going to go back in time. I don't know that I would put these in there quite these colors. I might have picked something else, but it's still okay. And the last one is the Alien palette. I love this palette. The quality is very much like the blood sugar. The mattes are really pretty. I know that when you look at it, you're like, it's kind of neutral, but there was just so much opportunity for this. You could do a mustardy kind of eye. You could do something with the purple. It was just a really pretty fun palette. And I love, love, love this one. I'd actually like to do a look with this and blood sugar together. I think that would be a lot of fun. And this very last section is probably the largest. This is all Urban Decay. So we've got this crazy monstrosity, which is collecting vast amounts of dust, but you know, <laughs> the packaging was to die for, and who didn't love Alice in Wonderland? The palette, I started my YouTube on this. I never put the videos up, but I was trying to do like looks going this way, and you could see that there was looks going this way, and it was so new and fun and fresh to me, but I have not touched this thing. It's been collecting dust. And I think this is gonna have to go in the pile to see if we're even, um, if it's even any good. I got this one last year, the Kristen Leanne palette. I liked this palette. I thought it was a lot of fun. You had these interesting colors. I heard that it might've been a remake of something else, but I enjoyed these little toppers. I obviously need to take some tape to it, but this beautiful golden kind of shade but even now, it's something that I need to think about because aren't these kind of similar to what I just looked through Alice? There's the Naked Basics. This one was so good. It's one that I've taken with me on set. It's great neutrals. I'm thinking I might get on this kick one of these days and deep pot all of my Naked palettes, the neutrals, everything, but I love the quality of these. Uh, we have the Spectrum one. It was all jewel tone, beautiful colors. This is another one collecting dust. I know I have this shade time and again with every Too Faced palette. I just don't know. I mean, this is not being used at all. At all, just hanging out and doing nothing. This one was one of my favorite palettes. Oh my gosh, it was so simple. I loved this shade. It's just, it was the most simple thing. And for the longest time, this was like my baby. And uh, now it, it's just not touched. I got this one when it went on sale, the Elements palette. It is pretty. It's just so lacking. If they would have done this with, you know, two mattes and then the shimmers and then the pan sizes are so weird 
But some of these colors are really cool. Like Fortune Teller is a really pretty shade. Electric Air is really pretty. It's got that transformer in the middle like we saw, and it's kind of a glittery topper. But you have to reach for something else if you want any dimension with your mats because it's only got one, two, three, four mats in it. But the shimmers are really pretty. I just think that some of these pan sizes are weird, even if, you know, if you have to use your finger to get in there. But I got this fairly recently and I, I like it. This is an oldie, <laughs> so old. It still has that little plastic on it. But this is the Urban Decay, what was it called, Slow Burn? Does it even have the name on it anymore? It was like the shadow box or something of that nature. And these were like crazy popular colors. Smog, mildew, sin. These are all shimmers. Won't ever use, but they were cult, cult classics. This one surprised me. Love this, love this, keeping, love this. Uh, obviously works on my skin tone, but the neutrals and the way that they performed was awesome. And I think that's why I enjoyed the Kristen Leanne palette so much because the two together was great and I got it on sale. But amazing little drop in the bag. Love this one. This is the original Smoked palette. I loved when they came out with the book with this. It was so cool because it showed you how to do all these different smoky eyes but with different colors. And I mean, they all essentially went with these and then you put one of these on the lid or something of that nature. But it was a cool little palette. I, I don't know that I need this anymore, but back in the day, it was amazing. Here we've got the Troublemaker palette came out with the found or the mascara and it was a good little palette honestly i mean you, we've seen these colors time and time again but i actually enjoyed the quality and look at right there that's similar to that one pulp fiction that i love so much but same kind of shades we've seen before relish is such a good shade i think that's why i picked this one up was because i wanted this as a single but built up blended out it was a good color this is the full spectrum palette. Oh, let's see if I can open it. It was the rainbow palette that I wanted and it did not deliver the rainbow goodness. It just wasn't pigmented enough. I think so many of us wanted this from Urban Decay because of the electric palette, but it just wasn't enough. Like they had the gradation, but if they had done a truly like a light matte yellow, a deep one and then the shimmer or something of that nature but it just it fell short I liked it but it was not everything that we wanted from Urban Decay to come out with okay so this one was the Montrosity that was all shimmer there's my face and they were really pretty but me going in just to grab shimmers Probably not gonna happen. And I know this about myself. Ooh, look at that one's coming off kind of funky. Why though? Why are you coming off funky? Hmm. This might have to go into the pile of test it out and see if it goes away. Here's some oldies, the Vice limited edition. I love these so much. I was obsessed with getting these. They had very few mats, but the shimmers were super cool. Loved this one. Let's see, this one was glimmery and shimmery, but I never ever touch them. Another vice was this vice two original. I don't remember which one this one was. I liked this one because you could go in different directions with it. But the thing about Urban Decay, and I, I'd love it if they came out with another vice palette but they turned up their mattes because they gave you three or four matte shades that are all various neutrals. So while I thought this color story was more fun because you could do this whole pinky look, but they're all shimmers. So if they would go back and do this again, but give us some mattes that were colorful that go with their shimmers that are colorful, 
I would so love to jump on the vice train again, but you had one matte blue, this matte color, and then if you wanna do a whole pinky look, then you're just forced with going here and here. Yeah, I did love these though. And this one was vice, I don't, I think maybe one was two, one was three, I didn't have the original. This one had a little bit more color, it went a little bit in a different direction. But again, same kind of thought process, mostly shimmers. What do you do with this? You can go here, you could go here, but I did some looks like going this direction, going this direction, but you're just forced to play with a lot of shimmer. <laughs> but what did I love? I loved this one, this one, and this was fun. But, Virtually nothing now, huh? That's an oldie. I don't know why they haven't come out with an electric two. This pressed pigment is so beautiful. Even now, as old as this one is, it still performs. I can still get a lot of use out of this. This is do number two, okay? Urban Decay, do electric part two. Another palette that I picked up because it was on sale the After Dark, it's their classic jewel tones, but they were all these foiled, more deep shades. But I mean, I know Urban Decay has been around a long time and it's like, what else can you come out with? But I'd really love to see them do a play on Vice or something of that nature. So I know there was some controversy with Urban Decay using the artwork. I don't even think I've... <laughs> ever use these I got them on sale it's so pretty it's so pretty I mean you can go here you can go here there was a lot that could be done with this but I I haven't really used them so I don't know that I'll get rid of these I love the packaging on these and here was the neutral one there was like tenant versus something else and um, I wasn't overly impressed with the quality of these eyeshadows, but the packaging, it got me. Okay, so we saw that I had the Urban Decay Ultimate Basics. These little basics palettes were great having on set and using for anything that you could possibly need, brows and whatnot. They're still in decent condition. The original Naked palette, I know that this was a thing that drove people crazy and they loved it. I didn't love it. There wasn't enough mattes. Of course, now you've got the basics that can really extend your looks, but I'm not quite ready to get rid of any of my Nakeds. Naked 2 was cooler in tone. I liked this too, but again, you're dealing with so little amounts of mattes and so many shimmers, but they are pretty, they're classic. <clears throat> Number three was the beautiful pinky tones, the rose golds, and I, I got a lot of use out of this palette. I really did like it. The smoky is actually one of my favorites, and I could be alone in this, but because it had four mattes that were really pretty and they were good quality, this is actually one of my favorite naked palettes. And I know this one like went on sale and was discontinued, but this is so good. Naked Heat made everybody crazy. I felt like this particular shade, it just didn't build very well and isn't quite deep enough, but you could pull out multiple naked palettes and really play. And then my newest one is the Naked Cherry. I really like this, but again, I feel like Urban Decay does not go deep enough for darker skin tones. That's why when I did the Rimmel uh, palette look, if you were of a deeper skin tone and wanted to try them out, I would go with the Rimmel before this because it just doesn't get dark enough. Like. Yeah, that's a dark color, but once you start blending out, I wish that they had done some of these shades even deeper so you could have a really good smoky look, but I do enjoy this palette for my skin tone. And then there was the Moon Dust palette, and I like the Moon Dust. I don't know what people thought this was. 
because it was marketed to be like the moon dust shades which i have a couple of those in single form and you don't just use them dry you're supposed to use them wet and it's like a topper so i like this i was glad to have this one all right guys you've seen them all these are all of my standard eyeshadow palettes what a mess i am let me know down below I have already started a pile of things that I mentioned in this video that I'm like, mm, I don't know if I want to keep that. I don't know if I still like it. So those things will probably make their way into a video testing them out to see if they're going to make the cut and stay or see if they're going to go into the declutter pile, which will either go up on a Poshmark, get donated or go into the trash. I sanitize my makeup, so I'm not too worried about that kind of thing. But yeah, if there's anything you've seen in this video that you're like, oh, I've, I'd like to see you play with the After Dark palette. I've never seen it on your channel. Or, gee, I wanna see these guys in action again before they go, because I don't know that I will keep these. I was really holding on to them for emotional <laughs> reasons. <laughs> because these were some of the, the things that drove me to love makeup, that drove me to buy so many palettes. And uh, yeah, I'd just like to know you guys' thoughts. Leave them down below. I know that I definitely have a thing for wanting to try out the Lorac, because I don't know how I feel about that particular quality anymore. I know that three years ago, loved it. And now I just have such superior quality in some of my indies, but I love palettes. I absolutely love palettes. They inspire me. It definitely tells me my makeup taste and how much it's changed and the things that I'd love to see out of brands. I mean, I can tell you right off the gate, I'd love to see a part two of this, you know, maybe some of the shades that are more shimmery, they could do them as mattes. This was such a good palette and then do a vice palette that actually makes sense. Like come in here and give us these rows of color, but throw in some mattes where it's necessary, a, a light matte and a dark matte. So you have a green row and an orange row or bring us some rainbow love in your good quality. Or if there's anything you guys wanna see from the naked palettes, let me know. Um, that's what this video is all about. We will definitely have declutters coming soon and trying out things, but I'd definitely like to hear you guys' opinions. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Don't forget, you can subscribe down here, and for more videos, click over here. Possibly there. There's places to click. Click them. Click them all.